Welcome, today we would be starting with the 8th class science and for a while forget that you are studying science. You are in a farm and you have a farmer here. Now what we would do is we would just take it as a journey to a farm, how the crop is grown, how it ultimately comes to the market and finally you consume it. So in the class 7 topics when we talked about we have understood the nutrition in plants and animals and this nutrition is derived from food. Now with this intake of food we help or we basically work around the various things for our day to day life. Now when we are talking about consumption of this food, where does this food comes from? There needs to be a kind of sequence through which we ultimately get the processed food that is consumed by us. Now when we talk about the sequence of things I can say first of all there is the production that takes place after the crop or the production occurs there is a kind of management a storage that takes place and finally it's distributed to the people so we would understand this series in a while now again prior to let's say 10,000 BC what was the scenario was People were moving from one place to another. Slowly and gradually, they discovered the art of agriculture and they started to live and remain at one place. And once they started to settle down at one place, the art of agriculture evolved. So you have, let's say, the wheat crop that came up, the rice crop that came up, so on and so forth. So when these crops came up, let's say you have rice in a particular season. Now I want to consume it during another season. What do I need to do? I need to preserve or store that rice for a longer duration. So all these are the steps involved when we talk about the food production and the food maintenance. So under food we cover basically three things, the cereals, the vegetables and the fruits. We also cover cereals and pulses. So pulses we include all the kinds of dals. Under cereals you have wheat, rice and then you have the vegetables and the fruits. There are predominantly three cropping seasons that we talk about specifically when we talk about India. So let's start with the first season that is Rabi season. So Rabi season you sow the seeds during the winter months. By the time there is a spring you have the crops there. So you have the following crops which are Rabi crops. Then you have three months of Zayat season where you have mostly the fruits and vegetables that are grown. After the Zayat season you have the Kharif season and during the Kharif season you have again the sowing that's done during the summer months and finally you have the crop that comes up by the time you have the next season which is Rabi that's ready. So you have a kind of complete cycle of crops that could be seen and you have the crops that are here. Now the next thing is the practice of agriculture. As we said, you are with a farmer now. So let's say what we all will do today. So we'll start with the soil itself and we will move on to ultimately storage. And once the crop or the grain is stored, you can consume it whenever required. So let's start with the sequence that's given here. So first of all, we do what we do is we prepare the soil, we sow the seeds, then we add manures and fertilizers, we provide water to the fields, we remove any kind of unwanted growth of the plants that is there, we harvest the crop, that's we cut down the crop and finally we store it for the season when it is required. So those are the stages under agricultural practices. Now talking about preparing the soil. When we talk about preparing the soil, we say earthworms are the farmer's friend. We have talked about it in the previous classes also. So what earthworm let's say do is it loosens out the soil. So when earthworm is loosening out the soil, the aeration becomes easier and from this loosed uh, loosened soil, the adding of the manure and the fertilizers or the humus becomes much more easy. Now again from the dead decomposed plants and animals you have nutrients that go into the soil and finally they are absorbed by the plants. So all this occurs only once you have the soil that is prepared. When I am digging the soil there are kind of upheavals that are created. So what I need to do now is level it off. So for leveling the soil what you require is a leveler. Ultimately 
Again, when I am digging the soil, what instrument do I require is a plow or a tilt. Now, this plow initially was a wooden plow and now you have iron plow even which is there. And once you have the soil that is plowed out, you add manure, you add fertilizer to the soil. Now, the difference between manure and fertilizer we would understand in a while in the third topic when we would be talking about adding the manures. Right now, what we are understanding is when we are removing the soil, you have crumbs that are formed. Now, these crumbs are available or present in the soil and when you basically try to uh, uh, put in water the water gets absorbed and you have these crumbs ultimately break off so that's how you till the soil now this tilling requires a plow share which is a kind of uh, iron strip which is triangular in nature and it is being moved by the bullocks so as you can see here bullocks is moving the plow share and it's ultimately loosening the soil Later on, as we said, you had uh, different mechanisms through which soil could be plowed. So rather than using the wooden one, you had the iron one that was discovered. Now this iron plow could also be used by animals or by human beings. So from, we moved from human beings to animals and now we have moved even to tractors to do this. And when tractors do this, we call this as a cultivator. So you have a cultivator here. So it basically is driven by machine. And when it, we say it's driven by machine, it saves a lot of time and labor. The next is sowing the soil. So when I say sowing the soil, what does it mean? Now the soil is loosened. I What, what I need to do is put down the seeds. So when I'm putting the seeds, it should be at the right distance. So seed driller nowadays is used to put the seeds at equidistance. Let's say it's 10 centimeters, then again 10 centimeters, and again 10 centimeters. So we are trying to put the seeds at equal distance. So each seed gets ample of water and nutrients from the soil. Again, there is a good test to understand whether the seeds that you are putting in are of good quality or not. Take two flasks, in one put uh, some of the seeds and in other put some of the seeds. Put water in both the flasks. Now what would happen is the seeds which are hollowed out or damaged would come up and float over. And that's how we understand or we find out the damaged seeds. So once you have the damaged seeds, you remove those seeds and you use the other seeds for uh, cultivation. Now the next is... The one that we talked about is the seed drill. So you have a kind of seed drill which could be seen which uh, basically puts the seeds at equal interval. The other is a normal traditional method of sowing the seed. Here what happens is there is a funnel shape structure. In that funnel shape structure you pour in seeds and as the bullock moves you have the seeds that falls in from the funnel into the soil. So those are the way we add the seeds. Now again, in some cases, you have the seed that is grown up in the nursery into a seedling and finally transplanted into the uh, main area. Then the third point, as we said, is adding fertilizers and manure. Manure is organic in nature. It does not cause any kind of pollution. It's 100% made from the uh, dung and the uh, compost material. However, when we talk about uh, fertilizers, fertilizers are mostly artificial. So you have the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium fertilizer, which we usually call as NPK fertilizers. Now, these fertilizers cause soil pollution. They were widely used during the period of green revolution in India. During 1970s, when we said we had an era of green revolution, a lot of uh, flourishment in agriculture that was seen during that time we used a lot of fertilizers but later on it was found that this fertilizer affected the soil quality in long run and damaged the next crop that could be grown in that region however when we talk about manure it is mainly from the animal waste cow dung as we said it's organic in nature it has good water retention capacity it provides humus but it does not provide the level of nutrients as a fertilizer does so fertilizer definitely provides much higher level of nutrients it can be in the form of ammonia urea uh, then you have uh, super sulfate and so on the next is crop rotation what does crop rotation mean crop rotation means let's say you have three seasons a b and c so in season a you would grow wheat 
In season B, you would grow leguminous crops. So what does leguminous crops do? Leg leguminous crops are beneficial because in the root nodules, you have rhizobium bacteria. And this rhizobium bacteria basically helps in the fixation of nitrogen. So once the soil is has nitrogen fixation that has been done this soil becomes rich in nitrogen so again when you have the next crop that comes in it would be beneficial for the wheat crop again so that's how we talk about the crop rotation that takes place the next is irrigation irrigation means watering the soil so when we talk about watering the soil we say plant require at least 90% of the water for the germination of the seed itself now this water is also required to protect the uh, protect oneself from the hot currents and the hot air and provide ample of moisture so this occurs through the process of irrigation now irrigation can be done in various ways we have certain traditional ways of irrigating so the traditional method we would be covering four different methods the first is the chain pump as you can see here now under this chain pump what happens is you have a wheel that's attached to another wheel here and on the chain you have small buckets so these buckets go round and round onto the chain and the uh, empty bucket goes in gets the water and comes up so you have the filled buckets that come up so that's what what is known as the chain system similarly you have moat or the pulley system this is a simple system where you dig water from the well and it's known as a pulley system the next is rahat under rahat you have basically an animal that is used it could be a cow or a bull that's used to move around and you have the wheel that works on this wheel goes into the water fills the water gets up and the empty buckets goes in so along this wheel you have the buckets that are put up the empty buckets goes in gets the water and moves up so you have the water that is being used with the help of animals and it is known as Rahat system. The next is Dekli system. Under Dekli, it's basically a kind of simple uh, rope and bucket system. So on a uh, basically a stand, you have a rope on which you have a bucket that is being tied. Now you have a heavy counterweight on the opposite side and you manually have to pull out, uh, pull out the water. So that's what is known as Dekli. So these are four traditional methods of irrigation Dekli, Rahat, Chain Pump and Moat or Pulley System. These are very very important. The next are the modern methods. Under modern methods we talk about drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation. So if sprinkler irrigation is commonly used in lawns, uh, plantation lands or in the areas which are not leveled or a mountainous kind of terrain. So what happens is there is a kind of rotating uh, body and that sprinkles out the water throughout the region so they are kept at different places and these keeps on sprinkling out the water so you have fountain of water coming up across the region so that's what is sprinkler system on the other hand you have drip irrigation drip irrigation means i put a line i connect a line of water or tube of water and you have small holes from that holes you would have drip drip water or drops of water that would be coming out and this basically conserves the water it's a kind of technique for we say under micro irrigation we conserve water for this this technique has been widely used in the arid areas of Negev desert in Israel and these Negev desert are now one of the major producers of agricultural crops in the region of Israel. So this has been highly successful the idea of drip irrigation has been highly successful in many parts of the world. The next is protection from the weeds. So as we said weeds are the unwanted plants. So what happened is uh, let's say you have a wheat crop intermediate to the wheat crop you have certain weeds that come up. So what is required is to remove those weeds and this could be done either by just hand or manual picking that's known as weeding or we do it with some uh, kind of kurpi that could be done however the idea is to uproot the wheat at the best time and the best time is before the flowers and the seeds come up sometimes you have weedicides that are also used uh, so kurpi as we said is used to remove the weeds sometimes weedicides or the chemicals are used to control the growth of the weed and these are usually 24d they do not affect the normal crop but they get diluted with the water and basically flow in with the water but the idea is 
when farmer is using it farm, for farmer it is definitely harmful so farmer must cover his nose and face properly before spraying the weedy sites the next is harvesting now after so much of efforts our crop is ready so what we need to do is cut that crop so when you are cutting that crop that process is known as harvesting usually any crop takes 3 to 4 months to mature once the crop is mature you can either cut it by hand or manually basically and that's done by sickle or you can use machines which are known as harvesters once you have the crop that is being cut you try to separate the grain and the chaff so grain and the chaff are separated by a method known as thrashing we have talked about the various techniques of separation in class 6 and that was winnowing so you remove the lighter ones by manual uh, small hold, hand holdings and what you do is you uh, basically the lighter ones move out and that's known as winnowing then you have combined that's harvester and thresher together and these are the new devices that are used which do both the work of threshing as well as harvesting in India across the region we have various harvest festivals that are celebrated these are Pongal in Tamil Nadu Baisakhi in Punjab then you have Diwali across India you have Nabana in West Bengal and Bihu in Assam so these are again some of the major harvest festivals that take place in India finally storage now what I need to do is I have so much of crop that's ready but I need to take this crop throughout the year until I have the next crop in the next year so what is required is protect them store them away from moisture insects pets a pest rat so all those needs to be removed so what we have we have huge silos these are known as grain silos then what we do is we also use the technique of irradiation we also use jute bags or metallic bins to store when there are uh, big granaries or silos that we have we also do chemical treatment in order to avoid any kind of damage to the crop for long run Similarly, if you are preserving something at the home, you could do it with dried neem leaves. That is a good uh, substitute. We have talked so far, so long about the crops. Now, any farmland has some kind of animals along with it. So, you have milch animals that are commonly seen. But when we talk about rearing of the animals, taking care of the animals, we call this art as animal husbandry. Now, under animal husbandry, you have various milch animals, bovines that are included. However, a good example here would be uh, from the animal husbandry also, we have lots and lots of inputs that come in. Let's say from fish, you have from the cod fish, you have cod liver oil, which is a rich source of vitamin D that is seen. So with this, we cover our first lecture on science that's basically moving into the farm and we would be back to our normal classes for the next round so stay tuned do subscribe have a great day